Hare Krishna. So chapter number 15, the Purushottam Yoga. So in the initial verses, in the initial few verses, Krishna described about an inverted banyan tree. Now there, Krishna spoke specifically about the branches which are going upwards and the branches going downwards. And it was told that these branches were nourished by the three modes of material nature. Now in chapter 16, which is titled as the Divine and Demoniac Natures, Krishna is making some specific point related to chapter 15. So now it is said that the one who are there, the ones who are there on the upper branches, they have auspicious divine qualities. And the ones who are there on the lower branches, they have the inauspicious demoniac qualities. Now, what are these different qualities? How is it auspicious? How is it divine? How these qualities will elevate the person on the higher branch? What are those demoniac qualities and what is the mentality that these people have which take them to the lower part of this tree, directly to the hellish planets? So, what are these different things about divine and demoniac that Krishna is speaking in chapter number 16? So, I hope we understood the connection between the two chapters, chapter number 15 and 16. Now, in the first three verses of chapter 16, Krishna is describing the auspicious qualities which will help the person to go up the tree to the divine forms. So, what we'll try to do is, we'll try to take these verses separately in three different videos and try to go deeper in each quality so that we can also imbibe these qualities in ourselves. So, in this video, let's see shloka number 1 of chapter 16. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Abhayam Sattva Sam Shuddhi Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti Dhanam Damascha Yagyascha Swadhyaya Stapa Arjavam So this is the first verse and it gives amazing qualities. Amazing auspicious qualities. Let's let's see them. First one is abhayam, fearlessness. Second, sattva sham sam shuddhir, that is purification of one's existence. Jnana yoga vyavasthiti, that is cultivation of spiritual knowledge. Dhanam, charity. Damaha, that is self-control or sense control, yajya, sacrifices, or basically doing sacrifices, performing sacrifices, swadhyaya, swadhyaya means study of the Vedic scriptures, tapa, austerities, and arjavam, simplicity. So these are different qualities which Krishna has given here. Now it's very nice to know that depending on varna and ashrama, these qualities are given. So when it comes to the Varnas, we have the four Varnas, that is Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. We have four Ashramas, Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasi. Now what Krishna is doing here is, he is helping us to understand what are the auspicious qualities in these different Varnas and Ashramas. So let's begin. Now, we, as, as we know, in the Varnashrama institution, the four Varnas and four Ashramas, obviously the Brahmanas who are there, the ones who are really Brahmanas by Guna and Karma, by the qualities and their activities, they are, they are leading the society. Below the Brahmanas, we have the Kshatriyas, then the Vaishyas and the Shudras. But then the leader of the entire society is a Sanyasi. He is the one who is renounced and at the same time very qualified to lead the society by giving instructions. So, like, what are the qualities of a sannyasi then? Krishna starts with the quality of a sannyasi. And the first one is abhayam, fearlessness. So, here it is said, the first qualification of a sannyasi should be fearlessness. Why? Why is it so? Because a sannyasi has to be alone without any support or guarantee of support. He has simply to depend on the mercy of Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
So sannyasi is a, a renounced person has to go around to different places and he's supposed to preach the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So when he's going from one place to another, there is no guarantee of his protection, there is no guarantee of his sustenance. So he should be fearless, completely fearless about what is going to happen to himself or to be more specific to his body. Hmm. And here it is said, one must be fully convinced that Krishna or the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his localized aspect as Paramatma is always within. That he is seeing everything and he always knows what one intends to do. So obviously a sannyasi should have this realization, but along with that, all of us can also have this realization. Doesn't matter which varna or which ashrama we belong to. All of us should know this one important thing. Krishna is there in our heart. Supreme Personality of God is there in our heart. So where is the question of fear? He is always there. Maybe our near and dear ones will leave us one or the other time in our life, but then... Paramatma will never leave us. He travels with us from one play, one body to another, to another, to another, from time immemorial. So why fear? When Lord is there, then why fear? It's a very, very important realization that all of us should get. Here it is said, now, what should be the thought process of a sannyasi? Even if I live in the darkest regions of a forest, I shall, I shall be accompanied by Krishna and he will give me all protection. That conviction is called abhayam, fearlessness. It doesn't matter where I am, where am I. Even the darkest of the region, darkest of the forest. But then Krishna is there with me. So there is no question of fear. As we always say, why worry in presence of Hari? <laughs> the second quality is purification. To be more precise, purification of one's existence. So here it is said that one has to follow the rules and regulations of a particular status of life in order to purify his existence. For a sannyasi, intimate relations with women and possession of wealth for sense gratification are strictly forbidden. So this is the thing that a sannyasi should do. So sannyasi maintains his purity by not associating with two important elements of this world. That is the opposite gender and the wealth and along with that a person is attached to this opposite gender and wealth so in this way we understand a sannyasi maintains that purity by doing this by keeping safe distance from wealth and female the next quality of a sannyasi given is jnana yoga vivasthitihi he is engaged in cultivation of knowledge Sannyasi life is meant for distributing knowledge to the householders and others who have forgotten their real life of spiritual advancement. So this is a very important point to note. This is a very important service that a sannyasi does for all the householders, ones who are married. So sannyasi will go door to door begging. Now he is not in need of anything. He has full faith that Krishna will provide me everything. But then he is going door to door so that he gets the opportunity to speak transcendental knowledge to people who are bound in the family life, who are not able to think of anything transcendental or anything about the ultimate goal of life. So sannyasi does this job. And for that, he makes sure that he cultivates knowledge by doing his sadhana. Finally, it is said, to, ma to summarize about the sannyasi qualities, that even if one, one has accepted the renounced order of life without sufficient knowledge, he should engage himself fully in hearing from a bona fide spiritual master to cultivate knowledge. A sannyasi or one in the renounced order of life must be situated in first abhayam, fearlessness, sattva shamshuddhi, purity and jnana yoga vyavasthitihi, knowledge. Now, after speaking about a sannyasi, now Krishna is speaking about the grihasthas, the householders. So what qualities they should have? The first one is dana or charity. Here it is said, Householder should earn a livelihood by an honorable means and spend 50% of their income to propagate Krishna consciousness all over the world. Charity in the mode of goodness is recommended by scriptures. But charity in modes of passion and ignorance is not recommended because it is simply waste of money. So this is what is the dharma or the quality that a grihastha should have, should follow. That is, one should give charity because they are the only members in the entire society, in the entire Varnashrama, who earn, who earn their livelihood. Whereas when it comes to Brahmachari, Vanaprastha and Sanyasi, they don't earn. 
So, grastas or householders, they maintain the other personalities in the society. So, it's very important to give charity. Because when a person is earning money, he becomes attached to that money. The hard-earned money. But when he parts away with the hard-earned money for a very good cause, for spreading Krishna consciousness, what happens? Slowly and steadily, that detachment comes. And with that detachment only, he can advance in spiritual life. So, one should give charity. According to Shastra, 50% of one's salary should be given in charity. If, if you are not <clears throat> come to that level, then at least some percentage we should start with and finally come you know, to the 50% of charity. You know, that should be given. Next one is self-control. That is Dhamma. It is not only meant for other orders of religious society, but is especially meant for householders. Sense control or self-control is very, very important. Why? Because when it comes to a householder, they have got financial independence, they have got time independence, they can decide whatever they want to do. So they have to control themselves, they should be in self-control. Here it is said, there are restrictions for the householders even in sex life. We should only be engaged in for the propagation of children. If he does not require children, he should not enjoy sex life with his wife. Modern society enjoys sex life with contraceptive methods or more abominable methods to avoid the responsibility of children. This is not in the transcendental quality but is demoniac. So just to unite with the opposite gender without taking the responsibility of the child is demoniac. Whereas when the male and female unite with the consciousness to beget a Krishna conscious child, that is divine. And then here it is said, the third quality of a householder. Sacrifice is another item to be performed by the householders because sacrifices require a large amount of money. So wherever the spending of money is involved, the grasta devotees are expected to do that. That is organizing the sacrifices. So performance of different types of sacrifices is meant for householders. But in the age of Kali, we need not perform those high, very costly sacrifices. But what can we do? We can perform the Sankirtan Yagya, that is the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So the householders regularly, they should invite various devotees to home and they should organize Sankirtan. And they should feed prasadam to all the devotees who have come. So in this way, these three qualities of the householders, charity, dana, dhamma, self-control and the third one that is mentioned is the sacrifice or yajna. So when these things are done, that is very divine. That will help them to elevate towards the higher level or advance in spiritual life. And then two more which we would like to see in this particular shloka is Swadhyay. Swadhyay means the study of scriptures. So one should study the Brahmachari. So this is the quality for a Brahmachari now. A Brahmachari to do Brahmachari should do Swadhyay in such a way that is so immersed in reading Vedic scriptures and uh, meditating on the points given in the Vedic scriptures that he has no time to meditate on the opposite gender or to associate with the opposite gender. So this is a very important quality of a Brahmachari. Now after speaking about this, Krishna speaks about a Vanaprasthi. So a person in the retired life. So what is he supposed to do? Here it is said. Tapa or austerity is specially meant for the retired life. One should not remain a householder throughout his whole life. So it's a very important point to note that if we have 100 years with us, then first 25 years one should remain a brahmachari. Second, he can get married and become a householder, a grahastha for next 25 years. So when he crosses 50, he is expected to enter Vanaprastha Ashram, where he is detached from his family, he and his wife will go for Tirtha Yatra. And at the age of 75, the person is expected to take sannyas. But the Brahmachari who is there, he has an option to enter the married life or directly to jump to sannyas order. So they need not go sequentially you know, from uh, Brahmachari Ashram to Grahastha to Vanaprastha, then sannyas. So in this way, it is expected that a person in the retired life, he enters Vanaprastha. It shouldn't happen that the person is in the household life and dies in the house itself. That is inglorious. That is not good according to Shastra. So here it is said that 
a man retired from household life must practice austerities of the body, mind and tongue. That is tapasya. Now, after describing about vanaprasthi, now Krishna is going to talk about the 12 qualities of a brahmana. And one of them is arjavam, which is mentioned in this particular shloka, simplicity. So, we will see all the 12, 12 qualities together in the next video. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.